Well, today is the climax of this festival. Over the past two days, 37 groups have performed. Six have won one way through Tata's final. Let's get to and see who those six finalists are. Our first cup of the morning is Teropu Manutaki from Auckland. Teropu Manutaki has won the national title twice. Our second group is Tefano Aafanui. A highlight for this kapahaka from Matatua was its third placing in 1988. The next group, Wahidere, has a string of titles to its name. In fact, this group from Tatairawhiti has won an unprecedented four times and is the current national champion. Another perennial favourite is Ngāti Wewehi. Ngāti Rangi Wewehi carry the hopes of Te Arawa, and they are another to have won the national title twice. Te Wakahuia from Auckland is another kapahaka with a proud history. Te Wakahuia is the three-time winner at the national festival. And completing our programme this morning is the relative newcomer to the national scene, Te Mātārai Iorehu. Their debut was in 1996 where they placed third. In 98 they repeated that achievement. So those are the top six cover haka for Aotearoa for the year 2000. At this time I'd like to welcome two very special people, people Wudumu Kere Kere and Tedita Hapish. Um, both Wudumu have and uh, Tedita have extensive um, experience in the field of Māori performing arts and they've kindly agreed to help out here and give me some advice on the, the dynamic world of Māori performing arts. E koro tēnā koe. Mōrena, arana. Koe anō, kōrero tio mai. Pēhi o whakāro mō ngā tau mā heke heke o te kaurua mano. O, tēnō whairua. O te hui nei, tēnō whairua atu. Ngā hūtanga, o te atamira. E whakātū ngā nei, kia tātou, te au katoa, e e pai ana ki aua, a i roto i waikata. Whai, kia o whakakaro a tūpatahi mi mua ngā tau mā heke heke nei. Nā, i te tūatahi tēnā koe ārana ngā tau katoa e whakarongo mai nei, kia tāhu e kōrero nei tēnā rātau i tēnei wā. A ki au nei, kai te miharo tonu au, ke ngā mahi, kai te kite a i runga i te ātāmira, kai reira tonu te ao Māori i whakapakari a i anō, Nā reira kāri oku a wanga wanga mo tēnei me te mahi a rehia i wanga nui a tāta. Ok, we'd like to make you aware that the six kapa will give repeat performances today but they start with a totally clean slate. The rōpū will be judged on six categories only, what you might term as the core elements of Māori performing arts. A trophy is awarded for each section and the total score counts for this highly sought after Duncan McIntyre aggregate trophy. For those categories, Hōtaka has this report. The Whakaeke or entrance introduces the group and is often an attention grabber. It usually links the group to the region and its host. Waiata tawhito can come in many forms. Pōkeka, ngeri, mō teatea, pātere, pao. Waiata tawhito a chance performed a traditional Māori tone. Haka is an aggressive posture dance which in simple days tackles current issues and challenges facing Māori dim. This item demonstrates the dexterity required when using poi. The rhythm of the poi helps to keep the tempo and beat of the song while demonstrating the meaning of the lyrics. Waiata Aringa are songs that uses traditional hand and body movements to convey the meaning of words. The Whakawatia ends the group's performance with it exiting the stage from the right, left or centre. Ai he taonga nui te mana wena. 
e peiwi o horere ana te totatau hui e naene well the excitement is certainly building that's because our first kapa is about to take this stage and that kapa is te rōpū manutaki hoia nō rā e te iwi kua rere mai anō te rōpū manutaki i whakaturia e tēnei rōpū o te waipareira i te tau o nō te kau māwaru ko te pauako ko tākuta Peter Shep, Charples o Ngāti Kahungunu ko te kai tātaki wahe ko ko Elena Sarich ko te kai tātaki tāne ko Peter Sharples anō kai te rāhi te iwi kua rahi ngā kōrero me huri te titiro te ātamira kei reira te pūtake o te hui kia ora mai Yeah. 
technical problems but I'm back now and that action song was penned in 1998 to mark the 30th anniversary of Te Ropu Manutake. Now they're poi te aho matua. This poi is dedicated to Kuroko Papa Māori. It celebrates the legal recognition gained last year of Te aho matua, the distinctive settled philosophies and principles that it is the foundation of Kuroko Papa. is the next item on the voice. Mate kotahitanga. 
this higher experience of the thing on the fucker that there must be unity if Māori aspirations for Tino Ranga Tiratanga are to be realised. The X item once again reiterates that the theme of Kotahitanga, of unity.
Kua huki mai anō te rōpupu anu taki I tēnei wā me kōrero tāua uh, e te matua mō, mō tāua rōpu um, Seems like te rōpu manu taki is returned Aye, aye. Uh, with it a vengeance They faded out for about four years or two uh, festivals Kua huki mai nei te kara te toa Te pakakari o a rātau mahi Tino a tāhua, tino pai Nga me tāne, nga me wā what was the uh, feature of the performance to you? Uh, the modernization of stage work, choreography, uh, the movements, the body talk, all very fast. Not to me completely Maori, but this is the way, this is the world, the way the world is going. Terita, a feature of Te Rohu Manutaki's performance is the use of Maori weaponry. Um, even by women, we saw women there using taiha. Peo karo ki tēnā. Oh, kā re raru ki ai tēnā huatanga. He rō te wai i rotu i a tātou te ao Māori te mau taiaha. Ana ko wai atu i atu i a pita. Hei whakāko ki ana kaihaka tēnei momo mahi. Ana re re mihi anau ki ngā wahine. Hoi anō, kā re sikson o kai tangata ki au me kahake. Hoi nga tāku ki a rātou. Hoi anō e mihi anau ki a rātou i te mau taiaha i tēnei wā. Another feature of their performance is the original compositions, all penned by, by Peter Sharples. Um, it seems to be a feature of this um, festival that um, original compositions are being nurtured here. Yes, we've seen a lot of new compositions. Uh, I think with Peter in, in particular, though, he has a kaupapa to talk about. Two kaupapa. Could put kaupapa Māori that he's totally involved in and his whare tu So that gives him a base for constant, uh, you know, energy being exposed in his composition. What was the big feature of their performance to you? What actually stood out? Uh, to, to me, the enjoyment of their performance. Uh, the crowd turned up here early today to be entertained and they got on that stage and they did it that they entertained them really well this morning so I think just the enthusiasm and enjoyment was the main thing Peter did so you were enjoying it uh, with a moon I, I noticed they followed their um, te rōpū mani te kihi particularly when they were doing their before you were putting in your hands and thoroughly, really getting into it thoroughly done. the choreography that they've done makes you want to move and you just can't stay still uh, even sitting on a chair at my age I want to move, because they, they turn you on. <laughs> okay, at this time we're going to wander on the road a bit and talk to Tiariki Nui. I understand that she has agreed to talk to us today. We're honoured honored and privileged by her presence. So... Tēnā koe Tiariki Nui, nā mihi o te rakea koe. Koe no a kai te mā taki taki mai te motu i tēnei wā, te aha o kupu tuatahi a kia kia tai. E te tuatahi e mihi ki a rātou, e whakare rangatira ki a mātou, e haere mai mai, 
Hari Mayorato Propu Mayorato Ivi. Itene o Tato of Kakata. To hold the host uh, to host the festival, one of the, was one of the highlights of their of their regions. Have you been enjoying the material that you've been seeing over the last two days? Oh, yes, yes, I've been flattered with a lot of the compositions, and I thought oh, I keep hearing that name all day. <laughs> but. Uh, we know that it's been a compliment to have everyone on here. What do you make of some of the stories that people are talking about? There seems to be issues like one recurring theme is the kōpū kō tahitanga. It's a fact too. That's a fact. And then what, what better themes is there than to again stress kō tahitanga? I think our people have to realise that, that that is that is the way to go kō tahitanga. And as it is a significant day today, we are commemorating the, the, the signing of the Treaty of Waitangi. Do you have any remarks about this the, this milestone? Yes, definitely. That's why I, I insisted that we must have a service for Waitangi Day. All right, and, uh, and, uh, and to remember that, you know, 160 years ago, when our people came together at the park here, and I hope we're doing that today. We're still doing that. Absolutely. Chariki Nui, thank you very much for joining us today, and thanks to yourself and to Tanui for being such wonderful hosts this it's weekend. It's been a wonderful pleasure. Kia ora, Chariki Nui, te nāpoe. Kwa tatu mai nei te rōku kapahaka o te whānau āwhanui. Anā, ko te pauako o tēnei rōku ko Rikitangi Gage. Kwa anō hoki te kaitātaki tāne, anā, ko te kaitātaki wahine ko Naomi Heruini. Kia ora mai rā e tewi, ānei a te whānau āwhanui. Now you might have remembered you might have remembered from that um, item that we saw from Paul Takamaipi who analysed the categories that will be performed today that in actual fact this is an additional item that some of the groups have opted to take and that is the choral item and I think they're taking the opportunity to sing the choral item even though there won't be any points apportioned to that section just to warm up their voices. So it's not far to go now, they are just about to take the stage. There go the MCs, Te Whānau Āpanui, right on cue.
Lovely, there was a lovely choral item to a kaharawa, a hymn of praise to God the Creator.
The Swayata is a favourite among the Paitapu of the Fano Aapanui.
Mr. Fire, I'm up here with, with their way of starting uh, Queenie Piggy, a tribute to the Māori Queen. And now they're poised to put kura. This was the name given to an incident when a boatload of children and two adults were drowned in a boating accident crossing the Motu River. The incident was prophesied by a Porti. Is the Haka Bike 
by Tefano Apunui He Uatoko. This haka is dedicated to lawyers like Moana Jackson and Taki Anadu who advocate on behalf of Iwi to protect treaty rights. Whakawate is the last time by Te Whanau Apanui. It gives thanks to Ihua Oga Mano for his aroha and it's very well to Tiariki Nui and fellow Kapahaka participants. Oh, <laughs> 
Well, as you can see there, rapturous applause for Te Whānau Āpanui representing Mata Tua Rohe. Well, I'd like to talk to Wirumu now and Hello. get his analysis of that group. Um, we've, Matua, we've only had two groups this morning, right. yet already we've had a contrast between a contemporary and a more traditional style. Right. Pehio Whakaro, more 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 tēnā. Yeah, yeah, it's about balance, this tension, if you like. Te Whānau Āpanui because they still live on the east coast <laughs> they uh, they have the thing of two faith there they take the maori to rata in a wakatoa a hakoa heha ka tika maori ka ya rata they retain what was a lot of the values that have changed now within the uh, urban and the city maori there's a difference. Well, in this next report you're about to see, I'm sure our co Matua will know every group that's about to be named. Mogotini in this report will name all the national finalists, all the national title holders who have won the festival since its inception in 1972. <laughs> By far, the Aotearoa Traditional Māori Performing Arts Festival is one of the most prestigious cultural events in the country. The festival has been running for 28 years and continues its tradition of uniting Māori dim to celebrate our culture. While the kaupapa at hand is to express Māori tanga, like the best of the best in other arenas, teams are giving it all to come away with the top prize. 1998's winners and hot favourites again for the number one spot, will go all out this morning to clinch a back-to-back -back win. Waihirere won the first competition held in 1972. They were title holders again in 1979 and 1988. Waihirere is one of two groups who have competed at every festival. 1973, the victory belonged to Maui Hapuna. The competitions also became a biannual event. While most of the raw food formed from strong tribal areas, because of the 1975 and 1990 competitions, Te Rōpū Manuhaki changed status quo. Its strength, performers and members came from the pan-tribal makeup of Auckland. The festival is a strong political voice for Māori. 1977's winner, Te Kotahi Tango Waitaha, challenged the sitting government to get serious about the revival of Te Reo Māori. Te Kotahitanga is the only South Island Ropu who have won a national title. The festival is also used to air various kaupapa of concern, like the retention of te reo, land confiscation, health. 1981's winners, Tanifitao of Waikato, used their occasion to support the growth of Kōnanga Reo. A display of Ihi, Wehi and Wana is a major point scorer with the judges at the competition. After all, they make or break a winner. At the 1983 festival held in Hastings, full marks went to Rotorua's Ngāti Rangi Wewehi. Thirteen years later, the group won the Thetic national title. And it made it even more unforgettable because it was a hometown on win. <laughs> Thirteen of the 26 competing Rōpū appeared for the first time. Two of those first timers were from Auckland. Both were rewarded for their efforts. Te Rautahi were third equal for Ngātangi Niuhi. The other newcomer, Te Okahuia, made the impossible reality. A first timer came away with the national title. Their second national title was won here on the banks of the Waikato River in 1992. Two years later in Hawera, 
but held on to the number one position in their consecutive wins a first in the 28 year history of our national competition. We are not a coro, co hooky or Mahara, a Mahara Pai winner. Aye, Jindu by the Wazu King are long up at you or a Kimu. What do you have to do to win here? Oh, you've got to have the X Factor. Uh, sometimes, no matter how brilliant a performer you are, it is just not your day. Um, you've just got to be in the right mood. Now, for Karo, Bobby, Kajo, the Yakuet, Mayo, for Karo, Waidua, when we need Bay, the day who got a you. The spiritual side is vital and most important. And do you think, uh, is any group that stands head, head and shoulders above the rest um, from what you've seen over the past few days, or is it an open race? It's an open race, and very, very close. Kia ora. Uh, I'm not predicting anything at the moment, I haven't predicted this before, uh, <laughs> several festivals. But I think the race is very, very close, and that's how it should be. Well, you... Okay, I understand we're going to talk to Paul Tucker. He's out in the crowd. Paul Tucker, what's happening out there? Oh, kia ora, I don't know. I'm with uh, uh, Krishna, one of the queers out in the crowd. And um, I'm just going to ask you how things have been going. It's just been getting more packed since the beginning. And we're just going to turn to Krishna now. How, how do you think it's been going so far? Well, there's a uh, high caliber of performance, a very high standard. I think the judges will have a very difficult time to uh, make their selection. Uh, there's just so much uh, variety and diversity in their performance. And, um, it's just high class, really high class. Kia ora, back to you, Arana. Kia ora, Paul Tucker. Well, me kōrero anō tāua e About to um, see Waihedere on the stage shortly. Um, you have a long association with this group. Um, for the benefit of our viewers, give us some kōrero about Waihedere. What, what's the secret with Waihedere? They have oh, such a legacy, uh, a string of titles to their name. What makes them so good? 50 years in this business, we started well, having competitions well before the National Festival. We were established in 51, and uh, by the time the festival came, we were sort of ready for it. But when we held them in Gisborne, it was to improve our district levels. We weren't thinking on a national level, but uh, we did it work hard, but they also I guess a, a, a distinctive feature of um, why he did it is, is the wonderful voices that they have, they possess, the harmonies um, that this group have. Yes, yes, it is key. Uh, when we came to Wake Up originally in May, we brought 150 performers covering from 83 in age right out of the present. And that's why we uh, succeeded there. Each age group sang their own style. My style, slow. Defending it with the words that the modern later on it passed a lot more jazzing and the modern rhythms of today, which I love. So Kabahake changed a lot over oh, yeah. the last couple of years. It's a whole new thing. Is this good? Uh, it, the, the we, have to, we have to go with the changes in the world. I don't entirely agree with it because when you're nearly 80, come lately. เออโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโดยโด
um, contrast between contemporary styles and more traditional. We've already seen it in the sport with the Manutaku and the Fano Is there any sort of tension here? I actually think there's major tension here. Um, but uh, it depends what we're looking for, whether we're looking for cultural identity or performance, and I have, you know, a lot of whakaro about okay, that. Okay, I have to stop you there, Tadita, and we might discuss it later, because we have to go to the stage. Wahere Re has just taken the stage. Let's go there now. Wahere Re, ko George metangi wairia nā kauako, ko rāua tahi anō nā kai tātaki. A nei te rōpū kapahaka, te rōpū rongonui, te rōpū kaumātua, Te rōpū toa o Wahirere. <laughs> and now the, cor the, the coral item is first Rōri Akiakoa. This coral is a tribute to the sacred institutions of Tainui, Kikitanga and Kamiyariki. Beautiful harmonies of Waiherere. And as Waiherere make their transition, assemble again for their whakaeke, I'd like to take this opportunity to explain their whakaeke to Māori, which is quite dynamic and quite complicated. This entry pays tribute, first of all, to the landmarks of the region. You will also see representations of the Māori gods, Tangaroma, Tawhiri Mātea, Tumantauing, and uh, Tane Mahuta. Māori Tiki Tiki Ataranga is another who will feature in this piece as an example of living life the fullest. Why he did it with the entry. Yeah. <laughs> 
Wyatt's Army. The Wyatt's Army are This action song promotes their notion of unity. By working together, a power as great as the forces of the sea will be discovered. This boy talks the traits of the Maui. His intelligence, his determination, his confidence, even in his cheekiness. The boy states we are all a likeness unto Maui, and it's through all these attributes that dreams are fulfilled.
Wahi de de now perform their haka kai whatever they are Lest we forget the heroic deeds of what's been described as the country's greatest export, the 28th Māori Battalion. Yeah. <laughs> 
Wahidere will end the program with the exit entitled Neo Kanoho Itoku Taumata. Wahidere, the champion team from Te Tairapiti. Well, as you can imagine, a hui of this scale is a major logistical exercise. We're going to start out of Hōtaka with one of the army of kaimahi who are running this hui. Hōtaka, hey, Kia ora, Arana. One of the positive aspects of this year's Festival Tūrama Wai 2000 has been the absolutely, absolutely fantastic organisation. One of the few people responsible for that was Alex Henry. And Alex, what has gone on behind the scenes? Uh, behind the scenes, a lot of hard work, a lot of um, sleepless nights, sleepless mornings, uh, people giving up their time, um, and it's been really good. It's been a good acknowledgement to our community, our whole community. I mean, not only the Māori community, I mean the whole community of Ngārawā here. If we didn't have backing of everybody here, this, this would be the excellent venue that we've, we've had here for Our Lady Te Arik Nui. I believe that um, my wife, my backbone of myself, my wife behind me, and everybody on our committee for our organisation here has been very, very excellent at putting everything together. And no one giving you any stress, uh, Alex? Stress? I think the stress is when everybody um, has put their hard work into putting things together. May it be all the resources they have to pull and try and work together as one heart as a committee. Kia ora. and that, that was Alex. But we're going to go and have a look now with, uh, at some of Alex's co workers who were behind the scenes. This is the end product of 20,000 practice hours, which shows the huge commitment required. But really, it is only the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> Events manager Horiawa is responsible for this year's enormous festival. We've had, to, we've had to rebuild this whole venue, basically. Rebuild the roads, make them wide enough so we can fit stands in. 
to make room for the many whanau that are actually going to be coming to this, uh, to this to the festival. So, um, and we're looking forward to Monday. I'm just going to have a look at that sample. He's driving too fast and he's going in and out of this. Uh, this Along with Horiawa, local committee member Joe Harawira is responsible for over 700 volunteers. We uh, have got around about on site um, 700 altogether, and that includes uh, ushers, runners, stage runners, uh, the people up in the kitchen catering. Uh, yeah, we've got about 750 all up. I'd like to know what the capital value of 750 volunteers is, but uh, and let the government know just what goes into organisation like this. In fact, the volunteer costs would estimate to over $300,000. But these keen kaimahi don't seem to mind. Yep, volunteer, waffle up, yeah. <laughs> you look like you got a very important job, what is yes, it? Yes, we are Sun Smart, Sun Smart, courtesy of Ngamiro, across the road there from the park. Kaimahi, okay, kaimahi, kera nao iho, amapapa mahi. Kaapiki ngā tangata taimai, kei pēr ato e nuhona. Well, the crowd seemed to be happy. Celebrity and ex-performer Timuera Morrison has returned to the festival, aware of the commitment involved. For one, I've been in uh, one of the festivals I haven't been able to, to be involved with, with uh, my group uh, Rangiwewehi that I normally perform with, but I couldn't make all the practices because of my commitments, but I made sure I had to be here just again to feel and see the excitement and see where our performances are going. Over 400,000 practice hours have been exhausted by the 37 performing groups. Not so much the commitment from the group too, but the commitment from all the Fano and all the supporting areas because with every performer, they've got kids, so someone's got to look after the kids while they're practicing. So, you know, it's the commitment throughout their whole Fano, throughout their whole tribe. And they've had to rehearse, rehearse, give up Saturdays, Sundays, afternoons. I'm sure they'd love to go to the beach. With many performers living outside their home rohe, great distances have been travelled to attend practices. I've been coming back um, every weekend from Himoto, because I go to university in Himoto. And um, so in that respect, yep, it's been a lot of, lot of time, a lot of weekends taken up, coming back for practices, back at Awano. As well as the performers, the local committee will still organise the large media contingent assist the kai whakawa who are to judge more than 400 sections the 70 stores that are hoping to sell over 200,000 items the gate takers who will tag at least 30,000 people and of course the security who will probably crowd just about everybody Well, Tarita, you heard that from Poor Hepa Harawira, 750 volunteers have been mobilised in order for this hui to run smoothly. How have you found it? Has it has it run? It's been run very well. Um, I kitakurongo. Yes, I think the hui has gone very well. But anai na na iwi te iwi o o waikato hai manaki i atatau katsua. Um, you know. There are people are here, and, and I'm one of them, but we are here to fulfil her wishes in terms of embracing everybody that has turned up to this wonderful occasion. Uh, so they do it full of love and aroha. You know, they do it with much uh, joy, and um, I think the people that have been here will have felt the presence of all of the kaimahi around here with their smoke-free awahi kore shirts on uh, being available to service the people while they're here during this time. Something that's really impressed me is being the selflessness of um, these kaimahi. You know, we've got this wonderful event happening on the stage. You, you see people at the back of grandstand parking cars, cleaning toilets. Uh, these are, you know, beautiful, humble people, aren't they? Yes, they are. Um, that's their, their part. To, they play that really well in this kind of an environment. And as long as they can do all the background and keep it going, they know that the festival itself will run smoothly. And, and when they're here, they're able to enjoy what's on stage. Uh, sure, they'd like to be able to watch that, but they have other things to do, and they do it well. Yes. I understand Paul Tucker has got another person that um, he's talking to now. Kia ora, Paul Tucker. People are doing. Kia ora. 
Kia ora, I don't know. With me, I have a few. I'm Tahi, and uh, they're quite excited what's been going on today. Um, to be what, able to enjoy what have you liked over the festival? The festival. Everything. Awesome. Um, what group did you come and support? Te Winga Waka! All the way from Mahi to Lelia. And what did you do to the International Committee? Bangala. Bangala. But um, a is strictly permitted. In the we have we have someone out there. Well, what are some of the groups that you've liked here this weekend? Why did it? Well, Kia ora, and there's a few responses from the Rangatahi here and the audience. Kia ora, thanks for that. Kia ora, 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 kia Absolutely to personalise that you know the point that you've made. I've got a daughter back home, um she's two years Years old and she absolutely absolutely loves way he did it you know she's been playing the 98 tapes I don't know how many times I think it's wrecked now so my baby you've got some new material but it, it really tells you that um, this material is so beautiful you can't lie to kids oh, something like that. here's a two-year-old who absolutely loves this sort of material yes I, I, I must admit I'm gonna get on the personal but to have heaps of mukapuna I share mukapuna with some of the kaifakawa and other people that are here and they know all the raw food not just why here they know all the raw food I can sit up there and spin out the odd verse of uh, anybody's items so yes our babies are all there and right up to our rangatahi that have come along as well to support the, the occasion what do you think turns them on what is it um, well, I come from a family where now we are all Māori speaking and so they hear first. They can't read, they don't learn these things from reading, so I think they hear the word and, the, and then they understand the kaupapa and then get some going, but we're rhythmic people and the rhythm and the music gets us going as well and the visuals. Okay, you talked about, you know, being a rhythmic people. What do you make of the choreography that we've seen thus far? Um, there's incredible moves happening on the stage these days. You like that? I I am all for choreography, but not to the detriment of sound. Because once the sound goes, you can't hear what they're saying. And they could, you know, they must be speaking Japanese if I can't hear what they're saying. So, uh, but we have really talented, skilled dancers. You would got to be a dancer to do this well. Uh, that, in fact, know how to dance and sing as well. And that's unique to Māori people. Most other island people don't do the two things at once. So I think we do it really well. Another visual element to um, Māori performing arts is, is, is uh, the body of adornment, the kakākahu. Now I noticed that kai te mau yā koe te moko. Um, what do you think about you know, the, the, the body adornment, you know, the, the incredible range that we're seeing um, on performance now? I think with the revival of Tamoko itself, we are starting to discover that every part of our body in, in Te Ao Kohatu was, you know, was adorned with moko. So um, I think this is wonderful that now people have, be, uh, have let loose, you know, they've taken off the sort of the, the shackles that have been there and, are in, and just being really innovative and creative with all the, the d designs that left for us within our whakataparapa to do this and adorn themselves beautifully. Kia ora. Kia ora. Well, I'm just taking a cue from the crowd here. I understand that the applause has gone up. Rangi, um, we, we, we understand is, is going on to the stage. Let's cross there now. Aranga kōrero mō Ngāti Rangi Wewehi Hero Pū Noti Aroa Ko ngā kaiako ko te Hiwaroa Morrison Rāua ko Ātareta Maxwell Ko te kai tātaki wahine ko Leanne Morehu Ko te kai tātaki tāne Ko Inia Maxwell. Ngāti Rangi Wewehi will begin their program with a way of the tira, a coral. The coral item promotes the principles of Whakapono, Tumanako and Te Aroha. Faith, hope and the most important of all, love and caring for one another.
Those were the beautiful voices of Ngāti Dungi Wewehi. And as they make their changes and their preparations for the whakaeke, I'd like to give you some extra information and history on this club. They were established in 1968. They have participated at every festival since its inception in 72. And that's another group who has travelled overseas as cultural ambassadors. Now this whakaeke entry is called Peke Haua Te Tanifa. Peke Haua is considered to be the Tanifa Kaitiaki of Nangi Wewehi. The fact there has been never been a drowning in that river in their river Te Te Awo, is its proof to that claim.
Rangi Wewe, he now performed the Mōtē Te e noho anau. This traditional item is a pātere. It, it established their links to Tainui. The first wife of Rangi Wewe, Hene Kahu, was from Waikato. Waiataringa is entitled Te Manu Kawea, the wandering bird. The sentiments highlight the importance of your heritage when life takes you from your roots.
And now Rangi Wewe, he pre present their poi. This poi laments the loss of one of eight wonders, wonders of the world, the pink and white terraces which were buried by the Mount Tarawera eruption.
The theme to that haka is complemented by the exit item, Ko Tua Wahine. It speaks of the strength of women who kept the fire, home fires burning during the war years.
Well, at this time, we're joined by a former performer from Nāti Rangi Wewehi, but he's a man that really needs no introduction. Te Munui Morrison, te nā koe. A te nā nā koe ana, morena nā ai au i o to te motu e mātakitaki mai nei ngā huatanga o te whakataite. Mona rana. Kia ora. Your reaction to seeing the whānau on stage? I've got a little tear in my eye. And I'm not so much crying for the uh, emotional performance that my uh, we've been associated with for years, but because of the fact that I wasn't able to be on there, and I have got itchy feet, and so it's just amazing. It. I'm missing it, and you feel it. It's one of those things. We're on the Waikato River. It's emotional. It's dynamic. It's beautiful. It's within our own context, and it's just an amazing, thing. incredible, awe-inspiring feeling. It started back from the 450. And I am a little emotional now. We've just finished, made it to the finals. Again, um, not too many surprises in the finals, I don't know. You know, with the top six groups again, we've got about anywhere we're here in there. Uh, with a very solid uh, program, one of the best programs I've had for quite some time. And um, and the compositions of Howard Martin and Bruno and Long Long Gatarere, my auntie, that have come up with another professional, very strong performance, and they're going to have to be. And I picked uh, the last three groups uh, this morning between Wakahuya, Rangiwewehi, or our other fantastic Arawa group, group um, <laughs> Matarai Oru, but, but a little, little bias. <laughs> okay, what year did you win uh, Best Male Leader? I was fortunate to win uh, Male Leadership back in 1986, um, and it was an opportunity, again with Rangiwewehi, they allow the young people, they give them a chance to lead a group, and it's very honoured, and um, it's uh, it's great. How feel? Well, it's just... You feel quite humble in the end because, you know, we, we're all the same and 
And what is a point, what is a mark against things like Ihi We, the one of the man, and the graduations to full the performance. And sit in my mind, I am envious of you. You have taken time out to get yourself on the stage and prepare for this festival. And boy, I've been around and I've been in different performance arenas, and there's nothing that beats being on that stage. This is the Māori Cup. We've got the Americans Cup running at the moment, but this is the Māori Cup. Absolutely. The reason why I asked you about the, the best male leader is because we're going to look at it some tape short. About, uh, um, it's an example of Peter Sharple's form. He was yes. announced uh, the best male leader last night. We're going to look at this in it now, and um, I'll be interested to get your whakaaro about it. Well, that was second time in a row for Peter Sharples. Very, very strong performer, Peter. Again, I think uh, Peter's strength is the, his uh, vocal power, his ability to sum up the situation. He allows his matua, his group, to explode, and then he'll sit back, you know, and he's always got his control on. But again, congratulations to Peter. I'd more like to talk about the, the kaitataki wahine, my sister. One of the best female leadership. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations to Peter again. And again, you know, that uh, when I won leadership, the biggest thing for me was the fact that, hey, you got no group, there's no leader, you know, and it's a uh, matua, uh, kaitataki thing, a relationship. It's how you feed up the group, how the group respond to you as a leader, and again, no people, no leader. Tim, what I really want to ask you about is, you know, like you've been there, done that on the stage, you know, there's beautiful stories that have been told on the stage. Now you're in the movie industry. Is that, you know, it's scope for our Māori stories to, you know, appear on the script? What a great idea. I've been involved in especially some hard-hitting films, as a lot of people know, and it's not the most um, uh, romantic comedy stuff up that we're putting out there. But look, the Māori people, we love to laugh, we love to sing, we love to stand up there and show the spirit of our ancestors still coming through, uh, through ourselves. And yes, there is a scope. Uh, we need our writer to write a, you know, a wonderful story. I thought of was, you know, a young Māori boy, a uh, little bit uh, uh, off the rails, a little bit in a bit of trouble. He joins a Māori cultural group. He comes to the festival and they win. Good script. Good script. We, you know, we need our Māori writers to, to start the more positive idea. Because, you know, I've done films like Wings for Warriors and, boy, when you, you come here, it is positive. It is they're standing tall. They're getting into health. They're getting into diets. If you see some of the strictness that these ropu are coming up with now, the discipline, I just witnessed a beautiful ceremony behind us here, I don't know, with Wakahuya going on the stage now. They're all blessing themselves with the, with the water, with the what, and in preparation for, for their performance. Kia ora mō tō whakaaro, Tim Wera, thanks for joining our show today. And keep up good work, we've got an excellent role model for young, young people. Kia ora Thank you for joining us this time. We go to support Tataka, he's amongst the thousands here. Kia ora Tataka. Kia ora, I don't know, the weather's getting hotter and the groups are hotting up and so is the crowd. But with me, I have one of the two, uh, the first person responsible for the two, my magazine, and she's going to give her thoughts on the media perspective at this festival. Oh, it's an amazing total immersion of a culture, um, wonderful expression. It's for photographers just dream down there, and uh, I'm sure the television cameras are picking it all up. But poor Taka, I've got to say, if we don't sit down, we're going to get excluded by the crowd behind us. She's so right, it's back to you, I don't know. Well, that was a quick Taka, go kill my mate. Well, um, yeah, the word is going out to Kokohuia. The next group is about to go onto the stage, and you're seeing the graphics there. There's the story of Tewakohuia. The tutors, Maira no ko Napo and Rawa ko Pimia Wehi. Ko te kai ta taki wane. Kai te he te rea. E tia tahua wehi. Ko te kai ta taki tane ko Chris Hinare. 
kaiti rai te wi me puti pito to tau titiro ki te ata mira kai reira te roro putoa te roro puko matua e fangana. Okay, I understand they're not quite quite ready, but listen to these stats. The record of Kahuya speaks for itself. In 1986, they were first. That was the first time they came to the festival. In 1988, they were second. 1994, 1992, first. 94, first again. 96, second. 98, fourth. Year 2000. Okay, the kaihanga tēnā. We should find out soon. Let's go back to the stage. Just just about how much I'm sure. Te waka huia. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a nice, huge, warm round of applause. My tamaki makoro. Te waka huia. This choral item is a hymn. Waka hui asks for support and a quest to empower the rangatahi, the young people.
Now, as to walk a hui, uh, we are seeing for the Fakaike, the King Yitanga, let me explain them. The entry item for to walk a hui traces the history of the Mummy King movement from Roman's birth to present day. There is a soloist here who represents Jariki Nui Tiatai Rangi Kahu singing about her forebears, the five mighty kings. With the death of King Koriki in 66, there was much, much discussion as to whether the king movement should be sustained. It was an issue that they traveled with Botu. And the Wakahuya acknowledged those iwi who supported the anointing of Tiata as first mighty queen. <laughs>
Waka Hui will now perform the more tia tia. This classic was composed by Rangi Yoya in memory of his son Tutu Terangi Faitiri, who died through Mark Tutu. Wakahuya now performs their poi, Na Uri This poi tells the story of a woman who's concerned about Earth's pollution. She magically explores the underwater domain of Tangaroa, the sea, and marvels at its environment and species.
And now that the Ansar hit Timatanga Ho, a century ago it was said that the Māori people would not survive. But in this, the dawn of the new millennium, we are most certainly alive. Wakahuya encourages us to be positive, to be optimistic in this new millennium. They say the key to our success is to educate our children.
Walk a huia with the deca. It hits back. It hits back. The negative betrayal of Māori by the mass media. However, a challenge is nevertheless made to Māori to stand up. Tia te porofata to break the cycle. Final item by Te Wakahuia Pu'alta. This exit re recounts the separation of Rai and Papa and the resultant life and vitality we enjoy today.
The crowd are on their feet. Another stunning performance by Wagwaguya. We come to expect they will be across the champion group. Um, just some quick remarks about Wagwaguya's performance. Um, general overview, Tarita? Um, again, stunned by the power and the beauty of our singing. Uh, it's, it's, you know, ultimate pushing. There's no room for any taking a rest. So, yeah, instantly, just the singing. Whakaeke was interesting, wasn't it? I thought it was dynamic, beautiful, and all those positive things myself. Yes, I do, I have to say, uh, but I wouldn't call it a whakaeke. Yeah, hi. Um, you know, the competitions began based on marae kawa, uh, and that stage was your marae for the day, marae atea, and you did a whakaeke as if you were going on to a marae, and you did a whakawatea as if you were leaving a marae, and, and, and this is not new, and it's long since been in, the, in this festival um, culture, let's say, that a whakaeke could start anywhere, you didn't have to start at one side of the stage and, and move anywhere else, so... Even though I liked it, and in fact I was more than I was the like, I was the best. I wouldn't call it a fucker again. Children, my dear, we know. Well, we're going to um, discuss the issue of um, women's leaders shortly. But first, we're going to take a look at this um, recording of Tiny Morrison from Matarai Yurehu. Tiny was judged the best women's leader last night. Let's take a look at this tape. Ladies, stunning blonde locks. Yes, I know, but it is. Yes, and, and um, what about happy people? 
performance didn't seriously here. Why do you think she won? Well, I'm a, I'm a great believer that, that a leader does, in fact, has to let the, the rest of her team feel what she's up to. And I mean, you didn't have to feel what she was up to. You could see what she was up to. And it doesn't take a mistake. It is about control. It is about making sure that you feel like what you're doing. And you've been up and down 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 and um, um, last night at the awards ceremony, there were the most moving moments when she went forward to do, um, accept the sauna, which it took also quite a while. She went down on her knees, um, put her head down, and she was cloaked with that uh, fabulous tonga. Did you see it yourself? It was a fabulous moment, wasn't it? Yes, I did. I did. And, and of course, it did remind me of other times, but uh, Tiny has been in this game a long time. And I, I, I personally am really pleased that she has had this opportunity to lead a group and to win, because she certainly has the talent and the skill to do so. Generally, generally though, what, what's been your impression of standard of Kai Tata Taki Pahine? People like Tiny Anderson, the partner who got third this year, um, certainly stand out for me. Overall, I, I feel that we don't have a good ensemble of Kakataka Wahine, but everybody has a different style, and not all of them would, would lead the way I would lead, uh, which is to take control. Um, so I don't think we do have a whole lot of outstanding ones there, but I do see within the ranks the possibilities of, of others getting a chance later on and being just as stunning. I really want to ask you, you know, uh, when we come to these festivals, do you get itchy feet? Um, I don't miss competition, but because uh, you know, I've got to the stage where when a team gets up up on the stage, it's just another gig. <laughs> so I don't miss the competition, but I keep involved in terms of the composition. Uh, but I love to still perform. Yes. What's your overall impression of the standard? We've seen five groups this morning. Um, it seems to be incredible standards that have to be attained here at this national festival. Oh yes, there is no room for you know taking a rest or, or being slack. And I'd say that I felt overall teams have lifted their standard. This is not including the, the top six. So I'm quite um, gratified about that. that there are a lot of teams down there. Give them time, the, give them a bit more experience. They will be pushing these ones to work a bit harder. But I mean, it's hard not to, to go with, with who we have today. Yes, absolutely. But I think you make an interesting point there that there probably are, you know, anything up to four or five groups that are possibly a little bit unlucky not to find themselves in, in, in today's final, not, not to get into that top six. I think the pool system that we have, in fact, disallows that to happen. So we do get the odd one or two teams in the six lineup who may not, in fact, come very close those teams who got third or fourth but don't get a chance to be up on the stage so that is one of, one thing about the pool system that I personally don't like because it doesn't give us an opportunity to see some of the other the teams and we may always be knocking at the door we may never get to this day so I for one appreciate the two days we have before and so we can see every team. So what's the solution to that? Um, do we need more pools, more finals, more provision for finals? Um, again, I'm not one who even supports the pools. I think you get up there and you get one shot at it when you practice the slot. OK, we've got to go back to the stage to the okay. excellent Kararo. Um, Mata Rai Iorehu has just taken the stage. Let's go there now. Kuya no hoki te kai tā taki tāne. Ara ko a mohi o no atu kuta ko te kai tā taki wahine ko Tiny Morrison.
And then another more theater here, which is a party day. They sing about the famous Shadow Chiefs tribal boundaries.
Tamata may now perform their way at Taninga to Tite Iwi Māori. The action song has a simple message that Māori unite in the new millennium.
The next item is the poi. It talks about the connection between Te Mātātārai and Tainui. This portrays the movement of the war party into battle.
happy we are here to play here all its glory and beauty. Now the way it's a teacher, it's light hard and number, it's yet a new. A unique move, Tamatarai finish with the coral item, which is a tribute to Tiariki Nui. Well, the crowd reaction there speaks for itself, doesn't it? Um, another stunning, dynamic performance by the Mata Iorere. Well, that completes the program, the performances of the Gnostics this, this uh, morning for the year 2000. Unfortunately, we have to come off air at 12.30 because of their merits cut. But the main thing is, we've seen that the top six and all I can tell you is one of them is going to be named national champion by the end of the day. Well, if I talk to our tohunga again about what we've seen in terms of the styles, the you know uh, the range, uh, give us a overview uh, view on the on the top six oh. thus far. Uh, there, of course, is an example of what we used to be. They try to be taking those qualities. They've got the gear, they've got the items, the traditional material. We, the other groups from other places, try to do it. We haven't got the knowledge, the know-how, but we've like, tried to learn from Iridangi. Okay, um, I've just heard that we have to go to a commercial break. We're back, back with our ancestors, um, our um, experts shortly. We'll be back next time. Don't go away. What's this? the beautiful expression of Tai Nui Tanga, the porphyry? Here's Liriata Makiha. Tuatahi ko ngā manuhi tuarangi i tākina ki te marae o tū.
ヤルアタウカトゥノテキテオガカノヒケテマタタリエトゥアリモママモテカワノロミカテラペトトラワタナノホペラノテマコジニシェプレイペネテアタミミカタカヒカヒエンガカカハカカ
Oh, my God.